Hello and welcome to Photoshop CS4 Tutorials by Kai Carden. Um, today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a very basic text font. Um, it's a polished chrome, so it'll come out looking pretty good. So let's get started. First you're going to want to go to File and then New. You're just going to make a brand new document. Um, if you're familiar with Photoshop, then you know what to do. Um, I usually set the width to 2000 and the height to 1000. It's just a nice high resolution size and I like it. But if you don't want that large of a file or you're, for whatever reason, you can always change the, the, the image size as you like it. Um, you can name it whatever you want, but just for the sake of my knowing that it's not going to change it since I'm going to save it as a JPEG in the end. I'm not going to change it away from Untitled-1. Alright, so go ahead and just make that document. Push OK. Alright, now you have your background layer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the um, the color tray and the color picker and we're going to choose our foreground color which is going to be um, all sixes and the hex are six sixes and that's going to give you a good gray a good gray color which will work out and you'll see why so push OK and um, go over to your paint bucket tool and if you don't have it set to paint bucket you can always right click on it and it'll normally be set to gradient but um, if you don't have it set to paint bucket you can always just right click on it and choose paint bucket so after that you're just going to <coughs> excuse me and you're just going to fill the background with gray. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch our colors and change the new foreground color to completely white. So if you just go over here and click and drag it to the far top left corner, that'll give you complete white. Um, and we're not going to uh, fill that one. We're going to click on the text tool, and we're just going to click on that and then type in whatever you want uh, to be your text that we're going to be editing. So, for instance, for me, I'm going to type in PM Studios as I am doing this to advertise my website, pmpsychoticmonkeystudios.com and then you're just going to center it. It doesn't have to be exact, but um, as long as it's pretty close and it looks good. Um, so that's about centered for me. Anyways, after that, you're going to go over here to the layers and you'll see the layer with a giant T in it. It says layer one as of now. I'm going to click on that, left click or right click, it doesn't really matter, and it's going to turn into whatever your text was that you typed. So after you do that, you're going to right click on it, and it does matter that time, and you're going to go up here to raster size type. So you click on that, and what that does is it turns your text from just regular text into another layer. So from here on out, you cannot change your text just by selecting it with a selector tool. Um, you can just drag it around. It's not editable text anymore. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Um, by the way, this is Georgia text font. You can set the text font to whatever you want. Um, I'm just going to give you a forewarning now that if you start out with a, a heavier font, a thicker font, you're going to want to do the Gaussian blur starting at 6 or 8. So we're going to go up to Filter, and then Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. And again, like I said, if you have a heavier text font, or thicker, you're going to want to start off at a radius of 6 pixels or 8 pixels. But Georgia isn't that thick, and we're going to start off with four, a 4 pixel Gaussian Blur. So it looks pretty blurred out, but it it'll won't matter later. Anyways, so after you've blurred it out the first time, we're going to go to Filter, Blur, and then Gaussian Blur again, and we're going to blur it out two pixels. And for those of you who are using heavier fonts, you got to understand that you got to work your way slowly. If you start at six or eight, then you got to go to four next, and then you got to go to two, and then you got to go to one, which is our next step. So go to Filter, Blur again, and Gaussian Blur again, and change it to one. Alright, so there we go. It's it's blurred out, but it'll become a lot more visible a little later. Alright, so after we've got it all blurred out, what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to Filter. We're going to go down to Render, and then Lighting Effects. 
Now, here in the lighting effects, we have a lot of options. You have style, the light types that has two different options, and you have the properties, which has four, and then the texture channel. We'll get to all of these. All right, so starting from the top, you're going to have the style as default. You don't want any of this other stuff. I mean, you could mess with some of the others, but for this specific thing, we're just going to have the style as default. And then for the light type, we're going to have spotlight. And then, yes, the light's going to be on. The intensity is going to be 35. The focus is going to be 69. Down on the properties, and the gloss is going to be 0. And the material is going to be 69. The exposure is going to be 0. And the ambience for now is going to be 10. All right, so now down on the texture channel, we're going to click down, and it'll say your text transparency. That's the channel that you want to select. And then, yes, white is high, and you want it to, the height to be 40. So after you have that set to 40, or you can just edit it in the text box. I just, I don't know, I like doing sliders. Um, you're going to click right here, and if you notice, it'll, it's the little, the little box that you can select that has the ray pointing to it, and that little ray represents the, the, pat the direction of the light. And so we're going to drag the direction of the light up to the top left corner. And we're going to pull it a little further out so that you see it's really nice and emphasized and it's it's got some structure to the text now. And you're just going to push OK and give me and there you go. Now you can see that it's it's kind of emphasized. It, it honestly to me it looks like a law firm text as of now. But um, anyways, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, and Curves. All right, and so you're just going to have to guess this one in, but as long as you get in the general area, you'll notice a difference. So you're going to click somewhere around here and drag it up to the second line, just a little over the second line. And then you're going to just let go, and then you're going to click right here. You're going to drag this down to the original line, and give it some space, so like right about there. And then you're just going to click somewhere around like here, and you're going to drag this down and you can move that along the line so and there's our curve push OK and now you can see now it looks metallic and it's not just emphasized alright so now the, our final touch we're gonna go to filter render once more and then lighting effects again and we're gonna keep all the same settings except for we're going to change it from spotlight to directional we're gonna change the intensity up to 44 and we're going to go down here to the ambience and we're going to change that to 54 or roundabouts so and we're going to leave everything else the same and we're just going to click on the light beam because now all we have is two points the point that's on the text and the end point the starting point of the light beam and we're just going to drag it down here to about the very bottom of the page and yes that looks very very bright but you'll find out that it's not actually that bright once you push OK. So we're just going to pull it out a little further, right around there. All right, that should be good. And we're just going to push OK. And there you go. Now it has a very nice, highlighted, bright, metallic look to it. And that is your polished chrome look. All right, so now we're going to go to File, Save As, or you can just push Control shift s or Control s whatever and you're gonna change it to whatever you want so um, yeah PM Studios Polish Chrome 1 because I did do this once already and we're just gonna go over here to JPEG and we're gonna push save and for JPEGs um, you can save it as whatever format you want but specifically for JPEGs um, it gives you image options and personally I like to have it the highest quality with the most amount of scans I really don't care about um, how large the file is I uh, really just concerned about quality so anyways after you set those options you can fool around with that you can just click OK that saves it and that should be it thank you